would very like to hear from you guys. How are you related to seafood? What you do, and what your thoughts uh, about the seafood in development trends in Lithuania and maybe beyond? Let's start with you, Ivan. Maybe. Uh, well, yeah, I um, I wanted to be a fisherman when I was a kid, so I guess it's always been a part of me. And uh, I, I um, yeah, coming from northern Norway, there's always a chance to go go fish, whether it's uh, freshwater or or at the sea. But no, I I. Um, Co 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 it was a coincidence, but I, I ended up taking a PhD with market analysis and focus on on salmon, and uh, yeah, demand and supply and the the typical economic uh, stuff. And then after a bit of twists and turns, uh, I ended up at the Seafood Council. So I guess uh, it was I'm, I'm back where I, where I should was destined to end up. So it's all about seafood for me. It's also kind of an accident. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it, it started with uh, the PhD, and then after that, I was kind of destined to 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 end up here, I guess. So that was the the, the little little twist in life. Okay, thank you so much. Come on. Hello. Um, actually, I am representing um, a land-based fish farm. Uh, uh, we we are, uh, have RAS system using RAS system in Klaipeda area. Uh, actually, uh, five years ago, uh, I met uh, Norwegian partners, and um, they asked just to find a good location for uh, to implement uh, in small scale uh, fish farm. Uh, and from that time, uh, I, I was involved in, the, in that business. Actually, I'm uh, at the moment the director uh, of Noras LT. Uh, we grow um, high-value uh, fish. Uh, it's Arctic char, maybe not uh, well known in Lithuania, but in other countries, it's uh, quite well well known. So, um, so it's it. Okay. First, Go ahead. First. Eustace, what is your story? Kuku. Okay, you can hear me. So, hello everyone. I am Eustace. I am representing company Kintay, which actually is. Uh, my father's company, he established it in 1993. It's almost 30 years old. So you can imagine what I had to face it because uh, all the time it was a pressure, Eustace, you're gonna take it, you're gonna take it. We need smart people. So for the last five years, I'm uh, very intensively working in it and helping for my parents. So that's how I, so I can say I'm not working like five years in this company. I'm liking, li I'm working here like for 30 years, actually, because all time I hear about fish. So I think this fits, them, fits my path also. So some people work in aquaculture. You live in aquaculture, I understand. Actually, yes, it's, it's, it's 40 kilometers away. We have a traditional aquaculture. It's like pond-based aquaculture. Uh, then you have uh, inland uh, ponds where you grow mainly carp. So as you see in previous presentations, in Lithuania we grow about 4,400 kilos of aquaculture uh, species. So we, sustain, we, we grow about 10% of that. And also, it's not the, 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 the last thing, we, we also process it by ourselves. And as you see, it, 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 we process about 0.5% of all the fish in Lithuania. So it's a small scale. Okay, thanks. Nerius. Yeah, and I'm not by accident in this sector. I knew that uh, I will be here since high school, but I started in fish ecology, fish stock assessment, uh, and different things. I, I defended my PhD thesis in this topic, but by accident, Andrus invited us uh, into his project to run shrimp facility, and the same year we got uh, uh, fisheries and aquaculture laboratory in Coronian Spit. So in 2018, we got uh, a huge enforcement uh, uh, aquaculture facilities and we started uh, these activities. So I didn't present it, but we are like four years. What, what I, w I was presenting, we are doing this four years. Okay, so basically aquaculture is a destiny then for Klaipeda. Destiny. Exactly. Thank you. So uh, moving on to the topics, uh, thank you for your introduction. 
And you know, I would um, like to start with you here, Evind, and uh, I just admire your work, and I know that you are in a tough market, you know. The old Lithuanian proverb says, the best fish is sausage, so we're still dealing with that uh, market issue. And I understand that you guys have a lot of experience in kind of introducing the communication practices or uh, having tools, tool sets uh, for making people eat more fish and make our world healthier and uh, cleaner. So can you share about your experiences in your organization? How do you approach the markets, especially complicated markets, or maybe you have some practices from uh, Norway to share with us? Yeah, I think uh, there's never an easy answer to, to this, but uh, but we we always try to understand the market. It, it, you have to understand the, the culture, the, 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 the type of food they, they like in each, uh, in each market. And, and uh, if, you, if you have a, a, a commercial that is shared all over the world, you, you, might, you, you might hit the, the, the jackpot on, on, on one or two, but, but, but you, you always have to, to, to adjust your communication to to uh, how people communicate, what kind of, uh, of uh, food traditions they have. And I, I think uh, that's a very important part of, of, of communicating and, and, uh, and making the world eat more okay. Norwegian fish. Yeah, and also, I mean, from tactical perspective, you know, I'm kind of quite often in Norway. So, I mean, you know, in a daycare, you know, children, they know fish, yeah, they know fish maybe more than we do grown-ups here in Lithuania. And uh, this educational practices is very important, especially that locally we don't have too much fish to source, even though maybe Nerius will not, will be against uh, my thoughts, but I really uh, not a fan of fresh fish from Baltic Sea. And uh, that's why I hope the aquaculture will, ki will kick off in Lithuania. And then the question would go to Sigita. Sigita's how do Lithuanians react to Arctic char? This is not something that we yeah. know in Lithuania as well. <coughs> yes. Uh, actually, uh, we, f we face uh, one strange issue uh, that uh, still exists uh, a myth that um, wild catch fish is more health uh, than uh, from uh, aquaculture. So, and we have to fight with this myth actually. But uh, also last uh, year we did uh, one uh, interesting su survey. Uh, we asked people um, uh, why they are not choosing uh, fish. Yeah? So uh, there was three main uh, answers. Uh, first of all, uh, because they think it's expensive. Uh, se se second one uh, was because they don't like the taste of the fish. So we have to improve, Im improve and, and that's why we came to the market with the different fish. Yeah. And uh, the third one was because they think uh, uh, it's, a di it's difficult to find fresh fish in the market. They don't trust uh, the quality. Mm. So uh, uh, that was our findings uh, from, from the survey. And uh, now we know what, how we can improve these things. Yeah. You touch a very good thing, this uh, rumors. And then even then I will c come back to you. You probably don't know, but we have rumors in Lithuania about Norwegian salmon a lot. Um, I don't know if you hear those, but I think the, the it's the same all over uh, Europe. So, and from my understanding and from what I know, you know, it's that uh, Norwegian companies in general, they are very much uh, care of sustain sustainability, you know, and food safety. But what kind of practices do you really approach to cut through this wall of rumors, you know, to promote in promoting the aquaculture products all over the world? Like blockchain, someone was mentioned, you know, there are several tools I know, but maybe you would like to share also how do you deal with rumors that Sigitas is facing here? Uh, well, we, we, we do uh, PR activities and we kind of uh, have a, like a monitoring in, sp in, in sp place to, to always be able to respond to allegations that are put out in media yeah. about Norwegian uh, seafood. 
So, so it's it's uh, it's an important part of of the job we do to 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 always provide accurate information uh, whenever it comes up. Uh, like uh, there was uh, alleged traces of COVID found in in salmon in China, and and there's been uh, some. Uh, speculative documentaries over the years about about uh, the health or, or the sustainability of of, uh, of aquaculture in Norway and and I think it's it's uh, it's 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 about providing accurate information to 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 not not propaganda but to to balance out these uh, these activist uh, voices with 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 accuracy yes and uh, yeah that you know that aquaculture in my opinion is a kind of a complicated process there's a lot of people don't know and of course people they are afraid of what they don't know so in this respect eustace you are yes. you live in the in the farm you can share a lot of how i would like to add also <laughs> that sometimes when you're explaining very simply how the fish goes from farm to fork people refuse to believe because they say okay it's too, too good to be true you know it's too simple we grow fish uh, ecologically, for example, we process it, and within 10, 12 hours, it can go to the shop. So we re refuse to believe because they say, it's too good to be true, I, do I don't believe you. So we need some something to think of and to have something against you. So I'm not talking about everyone, but sometimes people talk what di we didn't understand, so. Yeah, so how is, then we can move on with the question. So how, hard actually to be a fish farmer in Lithuania. I mean, what kind of bottlenecks you guys are dealing with? Uh, how do you survive in a way? Okay, so as we are traditional fish farm, so actually we, we face uh, a lot of a lot of difficult difficulties, especially within the uh, last five years. Uh, as you know, from 2018, it was forbidden in Lithuania to sell fresh fish, not fresh fish, live fish in aquariums. It was a tradition actually, and for 25 years, we just uh, caught fish from the ponds, keep them fresh and move the trucks to the stores. And it was like a usual way to do. In 2018, uh, everything changed and we had to process it. So as we know, we, we were, measuring risk and thinking what to do. So a few years before we build uh, our processing facilities. Because we want to be stable, we want to have some, um, how to say, bigger, big, bigger pro profit margins, we decided to build processing facilities. Companies who didn't do that, they say, face it another challenges. Uh, all the processors, they, they try to buy cheap the fish, process and sell to the retail markets. So that was one challenge. Another challenge is environmental regulations. Uh, as our company is established in, uh, in Natura 2000 territory and also Namana Delta Regional Park, so for us it's very hard to build uh, anything new. New buildings, it's hard for us to build the uh, solar panels like alternative, we can do that only on the buildings which we can't build. So this is another challenge. So what we do, we diversify our business. So as I mentioned, we grow fish, we process it. Uh, of course, we have a recreation facilities. Uh, it's seasonal, but it also adds up to, the di to diversification. And another thing, what we are gonna do now and what we are doing at the moment, we are building small uh, recirculation system, experimental, because we know that the future is there and we need to increase our productivity in order to pay higher salaries, to be more productive, to be more competitive. So that's how we are moving. Are you moving with the technology? Are you planning in RAS activities? Yes, yes, of course. It's next big thing, what is waiting for us. We wanted to do it before, but we were busy with our processing facilities. But because also it took like five years to normally understand the new business, to work prof profitably, and to understand that it's not enough, for example, to process your own aquaculture. You need additional, additional fish, so I'm glad that yesterday, for example, uh, it was first time when I was able directly to import fish from Norway to process it. So it came by, by the ferry, you know, mm. by cruise ship, by ship. So we do a lot of different things to 
be able to keep up the competition. Very good. Technically, you sit next to your future, you know. Sigita, to tell Eustace if it's worth going into RAS aquaculture in Lithuania. Be very carefully. Uh, because um, actually we had uh, uh, plans to expand uh, our uh, fish farm production. Uh, at the moment we are producing about 300 tons, but it's still not a commercial scale, as the goal is to, to reach uh, 1,000 or 1,500 tons. But, um, and the situation is not so, uh, let's say two, three years back, the situation was not so bad to plan these plans. And uh, there are uh, government support and, and the EU support. But um, after 2020, uh, the situation a little bit changed. Um, the market was unstable and, and uh, after COVID, all the building materials started to increase. Uh, and in, in the one year, our project uh, rises up on 50 percent. That was one reason. And an another reason, uh, actually, RAS systems are uh, highly de dependent on uh, energy because we are running uh, uh, water pumps, uh, blowers, uh, cooling machines, and other stuffs. And uh, of course, uh, there are coming a lot of innovations uh, saving e saving energy, but not so not so fast, like the energy prices are rising. Uh, two years two years ago, energy costs um, it was about twenty percent from all our production cost, and today we have about sixty five seventy percent energy costs from complete our production cost. So, um, of course. Uh, we stopped our big project, but uh, we not cancelled. Uh, now we are uh, focusing mainly to optimize uh, current uh, processes and looking for uh, alternative energy uh, sources. Yes. Today challenges, of course, every industry faces uh, that, and I mean this is something uh, that we didn't expect. But uh, what about, uh, you know, people be a to be able to do this type of activities. What about talent and people? Uh, are, do you have available uh, expertise in Lithuania or do you have enough expertise people to really grow and expand in aquaculture? Any of you? I can answer. Actually, of course, we face a lot of problems regarding people because this industry is not very sexy, especially traditional aqu aquaculture. It's very hard to attract to talents but what I hear today, that we have future. We have uh, this facility, Klaipedas Universitetas Maritime Institute in Klaipeda. Also, we have school in Shiluta. So we are happy that people are choosing this uh, aqua aquaculture industry. So it means that we have a future. So people don't want to go to traditional because it's very labor intent, but we are thinking about RAS. Yeah. So I think it's possible to attract young talents, but you need to have a good uh, environment where to work. Nobody wants to work in a field near the ponds. We want somewhere comfortable, you know, so yes. it's natural. Neris, you are a silver bullet for this particular problem. Can you elaborate on how is that from the scientific perspective? How do you approach that issue? I also would like to to respond to Eustace's uh, comments. Uh, yeah, RAS is uh, like really nice place to work. It could be almost laboratory conditions, white, clean, but uh, each uh, expert specialist uh, needs a lot of competences in this sector. So he he ha he have a really big responsibility. He should care about water quality, uh, animal health, technology. So it's. It, for this sector really needs high competences. And uh, we try to attract students to this sector, but again, maybe it's a bit too complicated, so we still need to work uh, in, this, in this sector. I think this is the field where business and uh, university should work together because uh, as we saw from the research that you, what questionnaire that you filled, that we filled, 
uh, they, it seems that they know what we are studying. They uh, they learn something new, but they don't know where we're gonna to wor we're gonna work. Because for people to invest their own money, it's 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 very capital intense industry actually. So moving on, can you elaborate what are the actions that you really take to attract uh, students and new students, maybe PhDs into aquaculture? Are you running any? specific facilities, how Klaipeda University is responding to this industry challenge? Yeah, it's a case not only of Lithuania, it's in general, we are running this Aquavi project with Poland, Germany, but the situation is similar uh, around the Baltic Sea, so uh, there is a lack of, uh, of students who are choosing this uh, section, uh, lack of specialists, so uh, activities, yeah, we try to promote it. Uh, we need to promote, we don't do this very intensively now, but s since high school to present uh, that it's also, it, it's some engineering, some biology, some some microbiology, some chemistry, some some good pay, good salary. So they need to, to know since high school, what is this uh, sector? Okay, thank you so much. Yes, go ahead. Actually, yes. uh, we are also uh, clo clo close cooperating with the Klaipedas University. Uh, I can say uh, we have some students. Uh, every summer there are coming some students for practice, and uh, so we have some workers also from, from Klaipeda University. With them, it's, uh, it's okay. But uh, one, um, uh, what I see, one problem also with the high expertise, with the high... Uh, um, experience uh, workers and specialists, uh, s especially who is working with the health, fish health. We face the, that problem and um, uh, for example now we wanted to pass uh, one uh, certification process and there was one uh, requirement that we have to hire uh, independent uh, uh, veterinarian doctor uh, who, who comes sometimes to the farm to check the, the situation, the, the health of the fish and so on. And it was quite a big issue for us uh, to find it. So just uh, that short my notice. Okay, enough about uh, challenges and bottlenecks. What are the opportunities? I mean, how Lithuania can be competitive in developing the aquaculture sector uh, do you have any kind of um, recommendations in a way how this can be better achieved and especially Neris from your side, you, you are the content basically. How do you build up the content for the industry to really convince them to step into aquaculture business? Yeah, as I said, we, we have this uh, test facilities and uh, we are able to, to show, to demonstrate for business what is what is to run such system about. Uh, we also, like we are doing uh, scientific experiments, which are interesting for us from fundamental point of view, but they are also very important for business uh, to, to run more sustainably. Let's say this uh, uh, a little bit salted uh, water and rust systems, and it is known that the same rainbow trout uh, grown in uh, in uh, salt water costs uh, significantly more than the same the same size drought grown in fresh water so this how we how we are like um, trying to achieve business you know offering uh, s small or bigger uh, solutions to 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 improve in their performance you do any specific projects with the industry together on uh, yeah, they, they finished now, but we had. Actually, we had some projects uh, five years ago we, we, with Klaipedas University. We, were, we are trying to introduce probiotics in our ponds for a few years and to see what's the difference. So one pro pro project and another project, it's called Floating Farm. Actually, we proposed like it uh, 10 days ago. So it's only in proposition. In so I hope we will win and be able to do like aquaponics on uh, traditional farms. So it's like a, it will be a test phase. So we are waiting for the results. Sigitas, what is your take on that? Uh, 
Actually, uh, we are also looking for um, possibilities, uh, especially we want to find uh, some synergies with other sectors, for example, with greenhouses. And it's already not a new topic, aquaponics. And last year we had uh, with the Klaipeda University together uh, on small scale aquaponic uh, project. Uh, so actually we see some future aquaponics. So and um, today uh, I apologize, but my colleague had uh, to make a presentation about it, but he got sick and he couldn't come here. Um, but uh, yeah, so we, we, we cannot stop. Uh, we have to be always on innovation path. Um, and we are lucky that our partners from, from Norway, our, our uh, one owner from, from Norway, they are um, uh, always, they are working with the RAS system uh, development. Um, always inventing something new, sending here, we are testing and so on. So we cannot stop, we have to be always on innovation path. Exactly, but one number that I saw on the even slides, you know, 160,000, if I remember correct, of processing in Lithuania. So how much of that we can substitute by aquaculture in Lithuania? Any it thoughts? You mean uh, about processing capacities or? Yeah, processing capacities. In, uh, I want to ask uh, about question. Uh, what do you mean? You need to change import the, the fish? Yes, well, with because aquaculture? yeah, we're going we're going towards uh, you know shortening the supply chain. So I mean, there is uh, a, s a significant number of uh, fish coming in from Norway, being processed in Lithuania, and exported somewhere else. Can we? You know, so it means we have a good processing capacity, yes? So um, what we don't have is, is we don't have any fish. Yeah, so yeah, how course. much of that we ca can supply or percentage-wise? As you saw from previous slides, uh, in traditional aquaculture, all the limits are done. For example, we cannot grow twice as much. We cannot grow because we face diseases, uh, increased cost, and so on. So what we can do we only can build the RAS systems in order to increase productivity and increase tonnage. And about processing, I know that currently we are missing some processing facilities because one thing is to grow fish, another thing is to sell fish. For example, uh, five, seven years ago, uh, we started a lot of EU funds which we are financing RAS systems. Everyone started to introduce African catfish farms, small farms, 30, 40, 50 tons. But what happened? They went bankrupt, almost all of them. And who managed to do business? Uh, these businesses who bought bankrupt business and done once again. So for African catfish, I think it took like five, seven years or uh, five, seven years to introduce to customers because nobody wanted to buy it. Now, now this market is available and we can, I think, increase capacities and, and grow it more. Af about uh, Arctic char, I don't know what Sigitas. I think it's tough to sell in Lithuania, yes? Because, because it's quite expensive fish. Lithuanians are quite conservative cons uh, consumers, actually. Uh, but uh, yes, you, you need to put a little bit more energy to sell uh, s something new. If you have s new fish, you have to add uh, more on the marketing and so on. But it's possible, I can say that every year we, we double our sales in Lithuania, but still not, uh, not uh, that uh, level what we um, expected before. Uh, we sell about 20%, up to 20%, all the rest uh, from our production. Mm -hmm. Uh, but as I said, every year we are lucky, we are happy that uh, sales doubles. Um, I think uh, answering to your, to your question, we have to be passionate because we have quite good uh, um, uh, situation, uh, situation not, not, not uh, good enough regarding uh, energy um, cri crisis. Um, but all the rest uh, is quite good uh, 
Sir Contemus, um, we have uh, support, uh, uh, we have uh, two universities who are working with the, uh, the preparing the students for uh, aquaculture. Um, so it, it takes a little bit of time actually to adapt uh, our processes to, uh, to these new uh, electric prices. And of course, we cannot stop um, with innovations because we have to to go further, uh, looking for um, uh, better technologies, uh, minimizing risks, RAS in in RAS in RAS systems. So we have to be passionate, and I think it uh, the RAS systems will grow for sure. Okay. I mean, I cannot ask about the Lithuanian situation, of course, uh, but I probably would like to ask you about uh, the situation in general, because, you know, aquaculture is, we, we call it in Lithuania, it's Norwegian business. Yeah, so I mean, and even though the, uh, co your co ne the colleague next to you, he's working for the Norwegian company, and you know, in EU, which is the second largest importer of, of, of uh, sea uh, food, uh, now there is a big strategy on uh, shortening the supply chain. So they look very carefully into Im imports and of course they establish a lot of sustainability borders and so which is not necess a problem probably for the Norwegian suppliers. But do you see any aquaculture capital flowing into Europe uh, with uh, for RAS or any other type of the systems? So how is that? Wh how do you see that future? Yeah, I um, I cannot speak on behalf of the Norwegian industry, no, of no course, <laughs> but uh, uh, we, of course, monitor, and especially plans for land-based farming has been vast and extensive, and, and also in Europe, but also all over the rest of the world. Um, right now, there's um, quite a bit of uh, plans that probably will not actually turn into to real life, but... But I think, if I'm being cynical, uh, it's it's about whether it is more profitable to invest in the EU compared to other places. And and uh, one one potential advantage is that you're close to the market, but also we're we're pretty close to the market in in Norway as well. So so uh, so. But I I think the the Green Deal Farm to Fork initiative. In general, it's it's a massive opportunity for seafood because it has to be part of the solution. It's it's the meat industry that has more uh, climate impacts. So so this entire big tidal wave coming, it it has to it has to involve aquaculture, and it has to be done right. And and there's huge opportunities, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Absolutely, and um, in looking from my perspective, you know, when I'm talking the innovation, because you are kind of a leading producer, so you have a very well-established background for applying the innovations, and we hear a lot of this, uh, of, of these projects, you know, like floating salmon farms, and just name it, and of course, this kind of affects uh, for the pricing or the general price because it's kind of a commodity business. But of course, you can even out on the on the scale. But how aquaculture is actually triggering some additional developments with the uh, coexisting supply chains, you know, like shipyards, digital companies, everything. So how that aquaculture commodity business affects startups and new companies popping out in Norway because this this can be a good model for Lithuania in the future yeah of course now it's it's highly industrialized and there's huge supply chain for a anything that is required to to produce uh, efficiently so so you got producers of the the raw systems the the pens the 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 well boats and uh, and uh, highly, highly um, skilled uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, uh, companies that, that work with cameras to count the lice or monitor the welfare of the fish. So, so of course, there's a huge industry 
uh, related to, to aquaculture in Norway and is also exporting to many countries for many other species as well. So, so of course, it's not just the, the export value of seafood that is the entire impact that we get from, from the industry. It's a, yeah. Yes, you also export a lot of food. So, so you're basically a, a model for aquaculture development in uh, Europe, and we will try to take uh, as much from you as we can. We have uh, almost five minutes to go. Uh, we probably need to open up for audience. Do if we have any questions from audience to our panelists. Here you go. Have a. Thank you very much for your insights. And um, then we will run a short closing. So guys, I've been starting maybe with Nerius. You, how do you see uh, the future of uh, seafood and how we, uh, how we, you do you think it's gonna be developing and uh, what kind of outcomes we're gonna have from uh, your activities in the near future? So just some closing remarks, each of yeah, you. Yeah, despite the current situation, I'm still very positive and optimistic about the future. And uh, I, I see and we are working in, in to into this direction that uh, especially Klaipa, the region, have some specific uh, competitive advantages for to develop this uh, business. So uh, even though we cannot take basically or, or a lot of water from the Baltic Sea, but we have some other art alternatives and uh, uh, maybe in some near or longer future we will have also uh, marine species cultivated uh, like on normal basis as now we are doing with the freshwater species in Lithuania. Justus? I s actually, I see also a lot of positivity in this market and I'm glad that audience also sees like that. Uh, it won't be easy because this business, uh, you, you can't be in this business overnight millionaire. You need to work step by step. For example, carp grows three years up to selling point. So Arctic char maybe nine months, something. Two years. Two years, sorry. Two years. African catfish half year. So we need to find best solutions, what to grow, uh, huge margins, how t efficiently to process it. In order to optimize industry, you need to have few species. For example, salmon. Why it is easy to optimize it? Because you have only salmon. But if you are facing a lot of different species and want to process it, you need to have a lot of manual labor, labor force. So we need some kind of strategy, actually. What to produce, what to do. We need some big players, maybe which can hold uh, good, uh, uh, good uh, 
working places, attract specialists, because if you need specialists, you need high salaries. So I see future, but we need to put a lot of work in it. Sigita. Um, actually, we are also optimistic. Uh, we think this uh, uh, energy crisis is for a short time. And anyway, we, we somehow will adapt to this, uh, looking for new technologies, uh, how to minimize energy consumption and also how to make it cheaper. So um, we are optimistic and I hope uh, in one or two years we can uh, release our uh, next project here. Thank you. Evan, what is your take? Yeah, I, I don't know so much about Lithuanian aquaculture, but my, my big a uh, key recommendation, I think, from, from what we learned in Norway is that, that cooperation, sharing the failures, sharing the successes, work together to build the markets. It's not a winner-takes-it-all uh, production. It's not like uh, Airbnb uh, where you have to compete uh, out the others. You build the market together, you learn how to produce more efficiently together, and there's more than enough people to eat everything you produce if you succeed. Thank you so much, gentlemen. They're already blinking on us here. Uh, so it's good we close with a positive uh, mind or mindset. And now from talking about aquaculture, we probably move into eating it. And uh, I will give the floor to Tom. Maybe Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Thank you so much to Thank all you. of you. Thank you.